So just a few things. Um, this meeting will be recorded. Uh, if you don't want to be in the recording, just make sure your microphone and your video camera is turned off for the period of this meeting. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to give it over to Mr. Don Smarto. He is one of our COA commissioners. He is an awesome presenter, and he's here to talk about um, diabetes, what you don't know can hurt you. So here we go. Don? Great. Hello, everybody. It's uh, good that uh, uh, we're going to have this presentation today. You know, uh, if you're familiar with the summit, I've been a member for a good number of years. It is so quiet here. Um, this used to be, a, a, before the COVID-19, this was a place of great activity. And uh, uh, we're, we're obviously looking forward to that return to normalcy. The whole country is waiting for normalcy again, as you know. But we're going to be talking about a very important subject today. And uh, we can do questions uh, after I'm finished, if that is okay. And I am going to do my best to navigate technically. So we are going to start. Um, so the, the, uh, the title is what you don't know can't hurt you. And, um, actually that's a false statement. What you don't know can hurt you. And, uh, diabetes is what we call the, the silent killer. Uh, it can kill you, uh, part by part as you will, uh, find out. Now I want to give a little, little background about myself. Um, I was uh, the chairman of the library board for 10 years and currently on the Commission on Aging, going to my third year, <clears throat> working on my 17th book. I'm an associate pastor here in Grand Prairie. Uh, I've done travel presentations both at the, uh, uh, the summit and the library. I go into juvenile prisons every month. Right now, because of the COVID, we're suspended. I'm also a, a photographer, and I have a radio show. So uh, this was uh, one of my... Uh, uh, exhibits at the library. Um, I've had photos that travel literally around the world. So I've had presentations in Madrid, Berlin, Chicago, and here in Dallas. Um, and there's a point to why I'm sharing this. On my radio show, if you look at the current screen, uh, my guests coming up are the mayor of Grand Prairie, Mayor Ron Jensen, the deputy city manager, Steve Dye, our former chief of police, and uh, Police Chief Daniel Sesney will be my guest uh, coming up Monday. Um, so uh, here are the cover of some of my books. So my point is, why am I qualified to speak about diabetes? I am not uh, a doctor. I guess we would call this uh, an educational program, but, the, but I would say what qualifies me is that I am a diabetic. And I wanted to show you all that to, uh, to make the point that I keep a very busy life and there's a lot of people who don't even know that I've been a diabetic. I take about five shots of insulin per day. I've had 18 um, eye surgeries. Uh, right now I'm about legally blind in my right eye. And that's from macular degeneration where you have bleeding, one of the symptoms of diabetes. Also, uh, I've had a little part of my foot amputated and uh, we'll talk a little bit later about, about balance. Um, so let, let me ask you this question. What, what is your number? Uh, the normal blood glucose level is between 90 and 110. You know, uh, the question I asked you was, what is your number? Well, that's, that's your glucose number. Um, I would say if you're a diabetic, it would be good to know that. If you're not a diabetic, you'll probably only know it when you get a blood test. So let me show you what I've got in my hand here. So this, this is, if you can see this, let me hold it up. This is a Dexcom, and I'm going to press it right now. And so I don't know if you can see that on the screen. My current number is 81. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a device that I'm wearing. It also shares it on my phone. So let me pick that up on the phone as well. And they use a Bluetooth technology, so if you... If you can see, um, the same number is on my screen. I'm, I'm 81. Um, you might think this is really odd. Uh, right before we began, I had a piece of one of my favorite candies, which is a Chunky. Okay. Now, you're probably thinking, if you're a diabetic, why in the world are you having a Chunky? Well, there's more danger in low blood sugar in going down rapidly, and so it's always important to keep with you 
uh, either a piece of candy or glucose tablets. Um, and the reason is because um, being low is far more dangerous uh, than, than being high. I mean, they're both dangerous, but if you are alone, uh, that can create a great problem. So let me get back to where I was on the screen. So I asked about the number. And so the reason that I know what my number is, because as I said, uh, I actually have a device that I wear. It's called a Dexcom. There's also one uh, we'll look at it in a moment. Sorry about this wrapping this here. So um, if you don't know your number for sure, you're guessing. And let me tell you, for many years I did that. I guessed. And that's really not very good. And what I found out is when I started wearing my Dexcom, or if you have a freestyle, um, you can be wrong. And if you're wrong, uh, that really long term can be can be very harmful. Uh, the Dexcom I wear is approximately where you see on that picture on the left. It, it goes on your stomach. And you alternate uh, from week to week from the right side to the left side. Some people wear a freestyle up on the arm, <clears throat> but it measures what's called your interstitial fluid. And it's, uh, it's very accurate. Um, there's a new one called the Dexcom G6, where you don't have to do a finger stick. Right now I'm wearing the G5, so I have to calibrate with the finger stick, which I think is, not, is not terribly difficult. Uh, some people need insulin. Uh, I needed it actually from the very beginning. Uh, the uh, pills didn't work for me, so I've been taking insulin shots, uh, which most people don't actually know uh, if they know me, because I usually don't do it in front of people. But that is, for me, it's about five times a day. And people would say, well, why so often? Well, normally your, your pancreas um, secretes insulin, which is necessary for the sugar to get into your cells. Uh, as you see on this line, diabetics, the only people that take drugs to avoid getting high. <laughs> uh, let me see, that's a joke. Good news is people with diabetes can live a long, healthy, and happy life. Uh, the important thing is regular visits with your endocrinologist, that's a specialist that deals with uh, diabetes in particular. Uh, knowing your blood levels frequently, uh, taking your insulin, and then of course the key factors are a healthy diet, exercise and a healthy weight. They all kind of, they all kind of work together. So here's a couple of points that I want to make. Recreation is very important, exercise. Um, depending on whatever age you are, whether you're 60 or 70, 80 or 90, keep moving. So for a lot of people that's walking. Um, I've got some balance problems, so the, the fast walking doesn't work anymore for me. Uh, like on a treadmill, I can actually, if I'm not holding something, fall off. Uh, but I swim every day, and uh, I'm fortunate to have my own pool, and I do that for exercise at least an hour. Um, laughter is important. Um, it's important just for our sanity, obviously. Reducing caffeine, reducing refined sugar is good. If you smoke, stop smoking. I think every doctor will tell you that. <laughs> Volunteerism, giving back to your own community is important. A lot of us don't breathe deeply. We breathe shallow. And remembering to just stop, take five deep breaths. Um, if you love music, doesn't matter what kind of music you love, whether it's country or classical. Um, and then being positive, being thankful for being grateful. And if you are um, a Christian or a believer, or whatever your faith, uh, praying um, is also something that we know helps people, people uh, stay healthy. Diabetes is treatable, but it's not curable. I will tell you over the years, I've had people come up to me with the latest um, cures. Um, and you know, you have to be careful. I know that people mean well, but the reality is uh, at this point, it's a treatable, it's a controllable disease, uh, but there is no cure. The one exception is surgery, you get a new pancreas. Most people are not going to have that. Um, you can look up this for yourself on the uh, internet, but uh, normally your pancreas releases insulin and when it's not working, which is really the cause for diabetes, um, glucose, sugar is really necessary. It's the energy for your cells, for your brain, for growth. Um, you can't do it without it. And so as time goes on for diabetics, there's a loss of the beta cells 
It produces little or no insulin. And here's where the damage comes in. The small blood vessels. These are the ones in your kidneys, in your eyes. Um, they damage those uh, small blood vessels and they damage nerves. So let me just mention neuropathy for a moment there. Um, a couple of years ago, I wasn't feeling really well. I was feeling a little feverish and uh, didn't know what it was. My wife said, well, let's go to the emergency room. I, I really didn't want to because I thought, and I didn't want the waiting time. Well, I got to the waiting room and you know they're, they're asking lots of questions. It never occurred to me that I had a little tiny cut on one of my toes. It was almost like a paper cut and I had washed it and I'd put uh, antiseptic on it and I put a Band-Aid. So finally at the emergency room, I said, well, you know, I had this little tiny cut on my toe. I don't think it's anything. They said, well, let's, let's take a look. And um, the interesting thing was uh, without knowing it, I had a bone infection. And within an hour, I was on four IVs they amputated the toe, and you know, obviously, you can survive without a toe. But the uh, the surgeon said before the surgery, we have to cut until we find healthy bone. And um, so, so why did it get serious so fast? Well, I have neuropathy. I didn't feel a thing. They said if it had been on your finger, you would have had excruciating pain. So here's the good part and the bad part. When you have neuropathy, you don't feel pain. The bad part is pain tells you when something is serious and I didn't know it. And I literally, I would say within days, I would have lost the foot and then could have lost the entire leg. So th this is why it, it, it gets so very serious uh, with, with diabetes. Um, we, we just don't, don't always know. So, um, okay, uh, two quick stories I wanna tell you. I was uh, in a hotel in Pennsylvania a couple years back, and um, the uh, diabetes is a balancing act. If, you, if you've ever seen a tightrope walker, anyone with diabetes, it is a daily, and I like to use the word battle, it really is. I think of diabetes as my enemy um, because I have to be constantly alert. Uh, you should always have, if you're in a hotel, see, I always double lock my room if I'm in a hotel for safety reasons. But let me tell you what happened. Um, I should have had on my bed stand either a candy bar or glucose tablets. I had taken too much insulin. And the fortunate thing is it wakes me up in my sleep. And But I was down to about 40. If you know anything about your blood glucose level, that's pretty dangerous. Well, you're gonna mimic the symptoms of almost being drunk. You're incoherent, you can't see well. I picked up the phone, I called the front desk, because what I needed was some candy and I didn't have any in the room. Well, guess what? The front desk kept hanging up on me. You know why? Because <laughs> they thought I was drunk. <laughs> and um, so finally I got them to talk to me and they said there's a vending machine in the lobby. I dressed real quick. I was literally bouncing off the wall trying to get to the front, trying to get to the elevator. I think I was on the third floor. Uh, my vision was obscured. I couldn't see, I was dizzy. Um, finally got to some candy and it takes about five minutes or so. The second story is I was walking in Washington DC, actually headed for what today is the Trump Hotel. That used to be the old post office. And I had done so much walking that what I hadn't realized, and this was a good number of years ago, 20 years ago, that the exercise had brought my blood sugar down. By the time I got to the hotel, again, I was in the range of about 40 and very incoherent. And I was trying to cut in line to get some orange juice, but nobody would let me because they thought I was just being rude. Police officer came along, thought I was drunk and was going to arrest me for public intoxication. I sat down on a bench, eventually got orange juice. Well, the end of the story is, I got better and was coherent, but I should have always had glucose tablets with me. And I learned my lesson. If you're in traffic, for instance, if you come out of an airport and you start to drop very quickly, uh, the danger is <clears throat> that obviously you, you can't get out of your car. And uh, once again, um, you, you can really have, have a problem. So, so I, I kind of learned the hard way uh, that you've really just always got to be very, very careful. So very lo low blood sugar. 
uh, can be an emergency situation. And you can mimic, again, uh, what looks like a slurred speech. It, it can certainly affect your, your balance. So I'm checking my monitor again and see I've just dropped again and I'm headed down to 79. So as I'm talking, I'm going to have another piece of my chunky bar. So understand again, yes, a diabetic can have sugar, uh, especially if it's a dangerous situation. So here I am on camera having chocolate because I need it. And uh, uh, do not stack. What that means very simply is when you get into a dangerous situation, you're liable to go overboard the other direction. So for instance, I could start eating two or three chocolate bars and then I will suddenly zoom up to the, to the opposite. So that's where you have to be very careful. If you heard that noise in the background, that was my um, machine actually warning me that I was going down. So it's probably good that this is happening right now because I'm showing you and having this uh, machine is really, really very helpful because it's warning me about what I need to do. Very quickly, by the numbers, there's um, about 415 people worldwide that have diabetes. So if you have diabetes, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, 30 million people in America. But here's the danger. There's about 7.2 million that are undiagnosed. And it's what you don't know again that can hurt you. 25% of seniors, 65 and over, that's about 12 million people. It's equal for men and women. It's the seventh leading cause of death. And there is about almost 80,000 deaths directly caused by diabetes because there are complications we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. People with diabetes have double the risk of early death. It is a leading cause of blindness. Again, because of the bleeding that it causes with those little blood cells in the back of your eyes. It is the leading cause of amputations. Um, if you don't wanna lose a leg or an arm, keep control. Uh, kidney failure is one of the complications as well as heart disease and stroke. By race, um, Native Americans um, have a higher rate than whites. Also, uh, uh, blacks as well is a very high rate. I wanna talk a minute about the COVID-19 virus. I mean, we're all hearing about it. And I'll tell you why this is important, because um, we, we often hear that people are at greater risk with, with the COVID virus, um, especially with people with, with diabetes. And I'm going to explain why. Um, why is the COVID virus more dangerous for people who have diabetes? Now, you know, we're learning as we're going along, quite obviously. Okay, so one of the things that, that makes it dangerous is you need uh, drugs like one of my uh, medications is called linesipril. It's an ACE inhibitor and it uh, controls blood pressure and it treats heart failure, reduce, uh, reduce uh, the risk of kidney disease. But what we've learned is with the COVID, for, for whatever reason, of course we're learning, all the doctors are learning as we're, as we're going. Um, and this is a theory right now, but it's a good theory. Um, these meds are enhancing uh, the COVID's attachment to lung tissue. It's making uh, the, the infection more severe. I have a pulmonologist I talked to last week on the phone, and um, so some of this is obviously uh, is coming from him. So your risk of getting very sick from COVID-19 is likely lower if your diabetes is well managed. So if you're in control, uh, you know, most of us get the flu every year, but it won't be as dangerous if you're in control. Uh, when people with diabetes, I'm reading the screen right now, do not manage their diabetes well, and they have fluctuating blood sugars, uh, they're gonna be at a higher risk for complications. Uh, having higher uh, heart rate disease or other complications in addition to diabetes 
can make your COVID-19 infection far more seriously. Uh, obviously, because the body's ability to fight off infection is, is compromised. Early studies have shown that about 25% of people who went to the hospital with severe COVID had diabetes. So uh, all the more reason to um, stay away from large crowds, um, be, be safe. Uh, you all know the protocols of washing your hands. Here's my face mask right next to me, which I wore when I came in the building. But, um, but this is a, a group that has to be very, very careful. What are the symptoms? If you don't know if you have diabetes, uh, like I said, I, I had it 42 years ago. Uh, frequent urination, thirst, hunger. I was flying back from a flight from, um, from California and had to stand in the back of the plane using the restroom every 10 minutes. That's a pretty sure sign something's not, not well. The flight attendant was very kind. Um, but I, I would, for instance, on business trips, I would buy a pound of grapes and, and eat them. If you know grapes have an awful lot of sugar, they're like a little sugar packet. Well, those were all signs that I had diabetes uh, you're going to find this very interesting. When I first went in to have the blood test, I was running about 600. That's extremely high. Your, your normal blood sugar should be about 90 to 100. Well, so I, as I said, I went on insulin within about, about a week. Um, and so uh, secondary, you're going to have fatigue, blurred vision, uh, slower, slower healing. Um, and so these... These are things not to ignore. So, so I find out uh, I'm 38 years old. I have diabetes. And guess what? My mother has diabetes. My uncle has diabetes. My grandfather has diabetes. My grandmother died of it. Do you think anybody told me? No. Uh, I don't know why, but in my family, it was like, if you had bad health, it should be a secret. And it is hereditary. Um, no matter what age you are, ask your relatives. Uh, if you have grandparents that are alive, uh, ask your parents. Um, because it tends to run in families. It's genetic. If you have children and you have diabetes, tell them. Obesity is a high risk factor, uh, a poor diet, eating too much um, junk food, obviously, sugar and carbs. If you're inactive, if you're smoking, if you have high, uh, high blood pressure, these are all indicators that can increase your chance of, of having diabetes. Here's a couple of quick myths. Um, that diabetes is caused by eating too much candy. It's not true. Uh, when I first had diabetes, people said, well, you, you got diabetes because you had too much pasta. I'm Italian. I, you know, I eat a lot of spaghetti and lasagna. I, I still do, but I have to be careful. Um, so, no, you don't cause it yourself. Um, it, it is mostly hereditary. The other myth is that you can never, ever again eat pie, cake, or bread. That's not true, um, but you're going to have to eat in moderation and you're going to have to cover, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, there are supplements that can cure diabetes. No, that's not true. I, I will tell you, people have recommended things I won't mention here on the Zoom, but um, we, we know that it is a disease. For some people, it requires insulin, and um, you, you just want to be very careful not uh, to believe in theories that aren't true. Um, that uh, a myth is that you can have all the carbs you want, but not sugar. Um, let me let you in on a fat. Everything turns to sugar. It does. Um, so if you like bread, if you eat a loaf of fresh French bread, which I love, it's all going to turn into sugar. So everything eventually uh, becomes sugar. So, um, Control cheating. What, what does that simply mean? Uh, I don't think you have to be the um, stick in the mud. You don't have to be the, the person who brings everybody down at a birthday party by saying, oh, no, no, I can't have a piece of cake. What you do is, um, and I think you saw by my activity, I live a very active life. You plan for the cheating and you cover for it. That means at Thanksgiving, no, you can't have three helpings of cranberry sauce but you can have one. You can have a smaller piece of pecan pie. What cover means is you know you're going to cheat a little bit, so you, you, you fast beforehand. You take more insulin to cover. 
as I say, there are no more ir, uh, miracle cures. Yes, all carbs become sugar, and that's, um, that's important to know. Can a person prevent or delay uh, diabetes? Yeah, they, they can delay it. I don't know if you, everyone can prevent it. Um, if you eat healthy, if you have an appropriate weight, if you exercise, and if you remember I said that before, not everybody has to be working on fitness machines. If you can, that's wonderful, but stay active. If, if um, in my church we have an elevator, it's only one floor, but take the stairs if you can. Um, exercise is simply keeping, keep moving, walking, swimming. As I said before, do not smoke, normal blood pressure, avoid excessive carbs and sugar. So uh, can, can I eat, um, move this up, can I eat cake, pie, pizza, pasta, bread? Yeah, you can, but yeah, let, me be, let me be kind here, you'll pay for it. Uh, you've got to be careful. Here's an important word. This word uh, really is found in the Bible, but it's also found in good common sense, moderation. Plan for the sugar and carbs, test your blood, cover with insulin. You know, if you think about it, moderation in every part of life is a really, really sound principle. Uh, if you overdo anything, you know, you can overdo exercise. Uh, yeah, if you remember James Fix, the great runner, um, he had a heart problem he didn't know about, but he collapsed and died running. Uh, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but but everything in, in moderation is really, really a great, great rule. It's a lifestyle disease. So walking and swimming, great form of exercise. Um, no sugar sodas. I've got next to me, I haven't used it yet, but I've, I've got a Coke here. It is a diet Coke. Uh, I don't drink any um, sugar added things. Take your medications or insulin. Know your number again. As I've said, I've had my little machine handy here throughout my entire presentation. I'm, I'm holding right now at 78 and it'll start going up. I had a little bit of chocolate, it'll start going up. So uh, I'm, in, I'm in good shape now. But, but you've got to know what your numbers are. There's something called the A1C. That, uh, that has kept people from cheating. <laughs> I'll tell you what I mean by that. It's a three month average that tells you what your average glucose level was. So you can say to your doctor, oh, I'm fine. You can take an insulin before your blood test and you may look like you're 100, 110. But the A1C knows your average and, your, and a healthy average is between five and six. Uh, right now I'm about 6.9, which is really good for me. Uh, keeping around seven is, is, is very good. You can be lower. But once you get up into an A1C that's eight or nine, what that'll show you is that your daily average number was 160, 180, or 200, and that's not good. You don't want to keep your numbers in, in that kind of, kind of a range. Uh, here's a little cartoon. I try to eat healthy, the person says to his doctor. I never sprinkle salt on ice cream. I only eat decaffeinated pizza, and my beer is 100% fat-free. Um, well, you know, there's a, a little levity here, but, but here's my point. Uh, people will eat eight pieces of pizza and then have their diet coke, and they'll say, "And they'll say, see, I'm balancing." Well, um, a diet coke is not going to uh, balance off the uh, six or seven pieces of pizza. Um, a healthy diet: low carb vegetables. If you like these, I hope you do. Mushrooms, eggplant, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, squash, zucchini. You, you can try them any any way that you like them. They can be raw cooked or roasted. Then you have uh, low carb greens, if you like kale, spinach, or chard. Uh, there are good fats and bad fats, we've heard about this. Olive oil is good, uh, avocado, salmon, uh, canola oil, the, these are all oils that are recommended for cooking. There are high fiber foods like peas, lentils, black beans, corn salsa, and oatmeal, which are likewise good. Um, Resistance training, we hear about this in exercise all the time. There's another form of resistance training. Resistance training is just as important as cardio. Train yourself to resist chocolate, resist pastries, resist fried foods, beer, and pizza. 
Now, uh, many of you have gone to the Texas Fair. I have over the years. I know it was canceled uh, this year. But um, I must say, and, and I, I hope this doesn't come off as being hypercritical, but I watch people at the Texas Fair eating horribly. I think you know what I mean. I'm not talking about the big turkey legs. I'm talking about uh, fried beer and fried butter. Um, I haven't ever tried those. I don't know how you fry butter, but maybe some of you out there know. But, um, you know, I hope that when people are eating at the Texas Fair badly, especially the fried foods, I hope it's just a one-time event and they don't do that on a routine uh, basis because long-term, uh, it, it's, it, it is really going, going to catch up with you. There are acceptable fats. We call them polyunsaturated fats. Um, and you can look all this up on the website for yourself. Um, the best sources of monounsaturated fats include olive, uh, peanut, canola oils, along with avocados, I mentioned that. Um, really what, you know, if you, if you had a, a, a beautiful car, uh, a Maserati or, um, you know, just a classic uh, um, Mercedes Benz, uh, you probably wouldn't put junk gasoline into it. You would probably be very careful as to what kind of oil, what kind of fuel. And if you think about it, you only got one body. Uh, you don't, you don't, you can replace a couple of parts, but you don't get a trade in. And so, what you put into your body really uh, has a great effect on on your health. Um, my wife lately has been telling me to read labels more and more. And what we've started to notice is that even when it says things are natural, they aren't always natural. Um, uh, sometimes the uh, first ingredient uh, can be uh, anything from cane sugar to added sugar. Um, and so uh, trans fat, uh, partially hydrogenated oils, I won't dwell on this, but store-bought baked goods, um, and I'm sorry if I'm making you feel bad, but crackers, cookies, uh, Twinkies, Hostess cupcakes, um, anything deep fried, um, donuts. Again, if you're hearing me correctly, Yes, you can go to Dunkin' Donuts occasionally. Um, you know, when you're celebrating, even if you're feeling down and you want to perk yourself up a little bit. What did I say before? Controlled cheating. Moderation. Just just don't do it all, all the time. Uh, with me right now, I, I've had this, I mean, my whole life. Here's my small little pack, and it's got a, a cooler in it. And here's my little bottle of insulin. And let me tell you, for, for those who've never taken insulin, what I hear all the time is I could never take a shot. So here, here is my insulin pen. And let me just show you this needle. It is extremely thin. You, you probably can hardly see that needle. I'm not gonna do it, but I actually could poke myself with it in front of you. I won't do that, especially if you're squeamish, but I could do it. And, and it's, it's not painful at all. Uh, you usually put it into your stomach where, where all of us have a little bit of fat that you can pinch. So for those who are afraid of needles, uh, let me assure you, it's, it's, it's not painful at all. You heard me say before, I take the five to six shots a day. I'm a, I'm a, uh, a candidate for an insulin pump. It's something I might consider doing. Because the shots don't bother me, people will say, well, why do you take so many shots? Well, I wanna keep as close to that 100 number as I possibly can. So I'd rather have better control. It's actually called the Harvard regime. And the Harvard regime means that during the day, a normal pancreas will spurt out insulin into the body, reacting to what is in your body, what you're eating. So I'm mimicking my a healthy pancreas by giving myself little spurts. It's not a lot of insulin, by the way. I'll give myself three units, five units throughout the day. With a meal, my average is about Oh, 25 units, it depends on what I eat. But it's called a sliding scale. And what that means is, it's not like you take one shot in the morning and it's gonna cover you all day. In fact, I take two types of insulin. One is called Lantus, which is my base. I take 30 units and it kind of covers me during the day. And then I take these little spurts during the day. Good choices. Uh, cook with olive oil, not butter. You can sprink sprinkle nuts on a salad, not bacon bits or cheese. Uh, snack on nuts, not crackers and potato chips. Um, put avocado on a sandwich and not cheese. Eat fresh salmon and tuna, not canned fish. 
So again, here's my point. There was a movie several years ago with Dom DeLuise. I don't know if you saw it. It was called Fatso. It's really a very good film. It's funny, but it's also very bittersweet. There's a scene in which he's with uh, his, um, uh, and, uh, his uh, nutritionist, and she's telling him everything he can't eat. And so, of course, it includes, he's Italian in the film, uh, it includes pasta. Uh, it, it includes uh, cakes and sweets and cupcakes. And you see this tear come down his cheek <laughs> because he feels like life is over. Well, I think I said to you before, I'm Italian. I still have lasagna. I eat pasta. But in moderation. I have to be very, very careful. I'll tell you the food that affects me very badly. Uh, my endocrinologist doesn't even know why, but pizza. A slice of pizza, if, if I don't take insulin, will zoom me to about 350 within an hour, which is not healthy. It's something in the dough. It's probably a sugar that's in the dough. So I love pizza. So I have to plan ahead when I eat it. Um, Watching sodium is another thing that's very important. What a lot of people don't realize, next time you go to the store and you want to buy a Campbell's soup can, look at the label and see how much sodium is in there. You will find that is an average of 700 to 900 uh, units of, of sodium. That's far, far more than, than you need. Sodium makes your blood pressure grow up. It's also hard on the kidneys. So things you need to watch. They add sodium to a lot of stuff. Beef, beef jerky, bagels have a lot of salt. Sodium is salt. Um, raw chicken breast. Well, you would say, does chicken breast have salt? Well, they inject it with sodium uh, to enhance the flavor. Any soy products uh, like soy sauce. Breakfast cereals have salt. Uh, barbecue sauce, frozen, frozen meals, cottage cheese. Uh, anything that's packaged usually has sodium added to it. So the point, again, is moderation. Uh, just check to see what, what they're adding, uh, because that, again, can be very dangerous for a diabetic. Uh, here's what I suggest. Eat the food that you like. And by, by eating the food that you like, uh, you'll, you'll not only stay healthy, but, um, but your, your diabetes will be under, under better control. So if you like peanut butter, which I do, put it on a celery stick. I can't eat a celery stick by itself. I don't know about you, but it tastes like cardboard. But... Uh, the fiber is good for you. The peanut butter is good. Melons, strawberries, blueberries, apples, oranges, bananas. Uh, fresh, fresh things are always better than canned things. They just are. So if you can get fresh fruit, fresh food. And uh, when I was shut in, which I was uh, March, April, and part of May, I ordered from Amazon Fresh, and they got it from Whole Foods. And so I was getting a lot of fresh vegetables and uh, fresh fruit um and really that that is that is but and, and i found that a very a very good service uh lean beef is, is good uh eggs cucumbers garlics onions almonds walnuts coconuts green beans bell peppers broccoli asparagus carrots shrimp tuna salmon clams and oysters are all things that you can eat again with the word moder moderation uh drink more water well actually um if you've got any form of kidney failure, and I have a little bit, but that's gonna happen with a diabetic who's been a diabetic for 40 years. And uh, once again, I'm in, in control. But the more water you can drink, the better. It's really very healthy for you. Uh, if you don't like plain water, you can add a lemon or cucumber to it. Uh, be careful with the sports drinks because actually sports drinks have a lot of uh, salt added to it, like Gatorade. And again, watch the sodium because it's not ultimately good for your kidneys. Um, you can drink hot tea. Um, I prefer filtered water. I buy bottled water, but the truth is I have a filter on a pitcher, which is just as good. Now, we know that the Grand Prairie water is very, very safe, um, but you have to understand they do treat water with a lot of chemicals. They do that, obviously, to kill the bacteria. Um, but the water that comes like from artesian wells, um, really has a lot of naturally occurring minerals, which are, which are better for you. So um, um, there's a lot of, I'm not gonna recommend any waters to you, but there's a lot of really good ones out there uh, that I would advise you taking a look at. So here, here's the thing that I really wanna say, and I, I'm almost done and I can entertain questions too. You can have diabetes and live long, and, and I mean in your 80s and 90s, you can live to 100 if, 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 you, if you take care of yourself, and feel good and enjoy life. 
you know, it was probably good that I was dropping when we started this presentation uh, because I was, in fact, feeling a little, little shaky. Uh, my number's going up now, and it went from 75 to 80, and it's continuing to go up. And um, so that little bit of chocolate helped me. But I think it was a good illustration to say that um, it is, you know, we've all seen a tightrope worker, probably at a, a tightrope walker, probably at a circus. And one of the things that you realize is um, it, it's a balancing act. And, and diabetes really is a balancing act. You will have good days. You will have bad days. Um, you know, the thing about the tightrope walker is if you don't keep your balance, what happens? You fall. And uh, there's not a great safety net for, for diabetics. So it, as I've said to you before, um, I write books, I speak. Um, before the COVID, I traveled quite a lot, went to the Mediterranean this time last year, and I'm a photographer. So I keep a very active life, and I got diabetes when I was 38 years old. Uh, I have probably had anywhere from four to 500 flights. I've visited 1,600 countries, and that's with my diabetes. I went to the, the back areas of Africa where uh, with my, uh, my ice pack, I always had my insulin with me. I went into big prisons in Russia. Um, it, does it stunt your life? Well, I wouldn't say that. It, it changes your life. I mean, my insulin, I have to always have it with me. And, and it's in a cooler so that I can, you know, it's important to keep it cool. It can't get too, uh, too warm. So the point that I'm really making is, um, here I, I've been a diabetic for 40 plus years. I've been very, very active. And most people probably wouldn't even guess that I have it. So my final points, and then we can entertain any questions. Um, an important part for diabetics is to uh, exercise. And exercise can simply mean, because people start thinking weightlifting. No, no, no. Um, keep moving. Walk. If you can walk every day, walk at least three times a day. If you can bicycle, if you can swim, um, uh, try, uh, you know, it's easy to say, try not to be depressed. You know, if you've lost a loved one and you are experiencing grief, obviously you're going to experience a little bit of, of depression. That's very normal. But, but I find laughter is very, very important. Um, maybe you have a, a silly, funny movie that you like that's, uh, that's tame. Um, but but uh, scientists have actually said that laughter really does, it helps us breathe more deeply. Um, there are these endomorphins in the brain that get released that make us feel good. Uh, reducing caffeine is usually good. Uh, reducing sugar, you don't have to really add sugar. Uh, you know, if you're eating fresh fruit, you're getting fructose, which is the sugar in fruit. Um, again, I'm sorry to keep belaboring the point. If you're smoking, stop smoking. Uh, volunteerism. I have found, um, I, I've worked in the city of Grand Prairie now. As I said, I was on the library board for 10 years and now on the Commission on Aging. And, you know, giving back to the community, I think is so important. And you don't have to do things for money. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the great pays in life is, is the satisfaction of helping other people. I love mentoring people. I've got several people, younger people that I mentor. And, and I just enjoy that because uh, we can pass on, hopefully, the wisdom we've gained in life or the knowledge we've gained in life. Uh, remembering to breathe deeply. We forget sometimes. We breathe shallow. But stop for a moment. Take a deep breath. Hold it inside. Uh, exhale. Do that five times. Um, do that often. And it, and it really is very helpful. Uh, I love music. My first degree was in music. I love classical music, but whatever kind of music you like, um, uh, when you go for a walk, wear your earbuds and listen to music. And my final point would be um, be, be positive, uh, be thankful for what you have. Uh, you know, I, I, just, I just hope that you will all stay safe and healthy. Um, I won't go over the things with uh, uh, the COVID, but I think, I think you know that. Uh, we, it, we're not out of the woods yet there, and, and, it, and if you are a diabetic in particular, uh, we've got to be very, very careful with this COVID. Um, I, I, I just minimize my risk as much as possible. As I said, I stayed a shut-in for all of March, all of April, and most of May. 
Um, I personally wouldn't get on an airplane right now. I'm not telling you not to, but if you are a diabetic, uh, you've got to be doubly careful uh, because the virus really can be can be can be life threatening. Um, I'm at the end of my presentation, and I'm so glad so many of you joined me, and I see the names of many friends out there. Uh, Carlton, hello, it's good to see you, and uh, Lily from our Commission on Aging as well, and, and Gary, it's good, good to see you, and, and for the people who are, who are new friends, um, I, I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, you know, I'm not speaking as a doctor, but I think, I think I'm speaking from experience as someone who has lived with a disease that is not curable, and I will tell you, I made a lot of mistakes. And the main mistake that I made, and let me emphasize this again, the main mistake I made was I used to guess what I thought my numbers were. And that was very bad. I think the reason that I'm uh, mostly blind in my right eye now is that it, uh, it did damage in the, uh, the bleeding in the back of the retina. And, I, and, I, and I, had I been in better control, I probably, probably could have prevented that. The amputation of my foot, well, I just lost one toe. Um, the, the balance as I've gotten older, um, I just have to be more careful. And probably as I get older, I may probably use a cane to assist myself. I'm not worried about the vanity part about that, but uh, uh, I, I literally can't always feel what's down there. Let, let me give you an example. Uh, at night when I'm at home, if I take off my shoes, okay? Now, now don't laugh at me. But if I take one shoe off and I don't look down, I don't know if both shoes are off. That's neuropathy. That's a definition of neuropathy. I have to look down and go, oh, I still have one shoe on. That's how much I can't feel. Now that came after years and years of damage. It, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, so I have to be a little more careful. I, I can miss curbs. Uh, when I was in Europe, um, I was uh, in uh, Monte Carlo. No, not, I was in Monaco. And uh, the cobblestone, of course, the old streets, if you go to Europe, are very uneven. And I tripped on the cobblestone and fell on the ground and uh, uh, hurt my knee pretty badly and it swelled up. So um, as we get older, we have to watch about falls. But in particular with diabetes, this, this inability to, to feel things really uh, makes things worse. But, but here's my final point. You can have a very full life. You can be, I'm active. You can be active. Uh, it's just, I, I've got to keep all these things with me. I got to keep my insulin with me. I got to keep my monitor with me. And uh, you know what, what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is dying young or dying younger. And um, I'm not done yet. I, uh, as long as the Lord, the good Lord wants me here, I still have things I'd like to do. So keeping good control uh, obviously just, just makes sense. So if you have, a friend or a relative who you think is not taking care of themselves, um, you know, don't be hard on them. But I, I would say, let them know if they don't have an endocrinologist, get an endocrinologist. If you're on Medicare, Medicare covers all the expenses. Medicare covers all of the cost of, of my, uh, my insulin. Um, and, and, and let them know that um, you, you can lead a very, active life. You can lead a, a happy life. I find myself, I don't know if I'm happy all the time, but I'm joyful. Uh, if you're like me, I've got good days and bad days, but for the most part, I, I'm, I'm a very joyful person. And I think that's because I have a disease which is in control. When, when people tell me, I would have never guessed you have diabetes, that for me is a compliment because that tells me that I look, <laughs> I look like I'm functioning. Uh, obviously, they haven't seen me fall in the parking lot. I don't do it that often. <laughs> and so uh, um, it is, it is the, a disease that we can't cure it at this point. Maybe someday in the future we will, but we can control it. And so in a sense, you are your own doctor. My endocrinologist has said that to me many times. Of course, you can cheat and nobody can know. Uh, no, you can be in the house alone and eat all the cupcakes you want. And, uh, but you see, you're your own worst enemy if you do that moderation. Do things in moderation, you'll have a, a good, healthy, long life. So uh, now if I can figure out how to unmute this, then I can entertain any questions anyone has. And so I've allowed everyone to unmute themselves. If okay. you'd like to good. ask um, Mr. Smarto a question, you're more than welcome to now. Please. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. 
Thanks for joining oh, us. We miss you. Thank you. I missed you all. Miss you. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, you know, being a diabetic, Don, you are a real good role model. Oh, well, thank you. You are very inspirational, and everybody needs to be active. Exercise yeah. is an investment to your life, and that's why you lead a wonderful life. Well, you know, we're, we're all tempted with this COVID to uh, sit in a chair and watch TV nonstop. You know what? Get out of the house. Uh, there's a beautiful path in back of the summit uh, that goes around a little pond. And walking is so healthy. Uh, as I said, I, go, I swim every single day for at least an hour. And, and I know I feel better because of it. And Lili, you, you've been an inspiration to people too. Uh, our ARP has so many uh, good guidelines and bulletins. In fact, can you tell people how they can connect with ARP? Yeah, you just go to arp.org. And once you get on the website, there's so many topics you can pick. You know, mm -hmm. financial, health, uh, brain games, and everything. Yes. As long as you're a member, you know, you can access the website. Yeah, it's not very costly. And by the way, if no, it's only like sixteen dollars a year for two people. You get two magazines. <laughs> yeah, our ARP is They're full a, of information. It is. Anybody else have a thought or a question? I had a comment, Don. Uh, Hi, how are you? you? Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for all your Good. great information. Thank you. I have a friend who has diabetes. I don't think I have it, but I'm going to have a physical this month, so I'll ask him to check. I have neuropathy, and it is in check right now. I went to DFW Neuropathy Associates, uh, Dr. Ali Alabi, and uh, I go in my, all my Medicare and my supplement covered everything. You have to go several times a week, and you do electrical Where, where is your neuropathy? Is it in your hands? Or it's hands and feet, and I yeah. don't know why I have it. Um, uh, uh, research, there's, oh, they tell you there's over 300 reasons that you can get it. But anyway, uh, it's, um, if you go and you're faithful and you do the electrical stimulation, mm -hmm. uh, like they tell you, 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 they don't know how long you may never have to go back or all people are different. But I've, it's been two years since I've had Good. any treatments and I'm doing really well. And so I'm very thankful. I don't take any medicine for it. Just the electrical stimulation mimics uh, uh, very active uh, exercise. You know, in, in my case, those nerves are already damaged. Uh, and one of the reasons that diabetes gets neuropathy is your extremities, which would be your hands and your feet, is as far away you know, from your body as possible. And that's where the capillaries get very, very tiny. And that's where the sugar does does the damage, and uh, okay. it's not always reversible. But uh, but that's a very good point, and I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And there are others in the area who do the same thing as well. But this doctor almost lost part of his leg. Mm. And he found out about this, and he switched over from his practice to this neuropathy practice. So he's and saved his leg. So he's totally sold on it. That is good to hear. You know, uh, I, I mentioned that in, in my family. Uh, my mother had uh, diabetes, but never told me. And uh, it was probably old school thinking that, you know, don't ever share a disease with anybody because, you know, it's like a <laughs> But we had this uncle we used to visit. And uh, I remember that he couldn't see very well. And then uh, he had lost a leg. And my mother told me it was a war wound. And then he lost his other leg. Well, you probably know the end of the story. He was a diabetic and had two amputations. And, and one time I'm talking to his daughter. This is years after he passed. And I said, I was sorry to hear about your father's war wounds. And she said, what war wounds? He was never in the war. And so it turned out it was all from diabetes. And my mother just rather than uh, talking about the disease, thought it would be better to, you know, call him a, a injured in, in, a, in a battle. Um, that was old thinking, and I think we've gotten to a point today where we can we can openly talk about illness. And it does neuropathy it does get worse if you don't do something about it. That's right. That's right. Anybody else have a thought or a comment? Hello, Don. Hello, uh, hello gang. Hello, Carlton. It's just a hello, gang. Uh, good to see you. It's good to see all the faces again. Uh, 
And as usual, Don, that's an excellent job. Uh, well, thank and you, sir. Being a diabetic myself, I'm always all ears when you when you talk about the things that are beneficial to us. I hope I didn't make you feel bad by saying you got to reduce <laughs> the cupcakes. <laughs> no, you didn't. Moderation. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I didn't. I, I have to admit, I didn't get in till late. I'm having a problem here getting in, and I finally got in, but. Uh, your presentation is always enlightening. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you. All right guys. So Do just a... any, Does Don have any what? upcoming presentations anytime soon? Does Don have any upcoming presentations anytime soon? Well, so we're actually going to work on that. Yes, oh, we good. do. <laughs> Yep. And we're even thinking of doing more travel on Zoom. Oh, good. Yeah. Yay. Two thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so actually, that's actually... I'm actually giving one on August the 13th on telemedicine. Good. Okay. So I hope y'all tune in. Okay. You know, all right. Okay. You, beat me, it, okay. you okay. beat me to it, Lily. You beat me to it. Great. <laughs> so everybody that's on, please stay tuned. Um, the summit is working on providing more presentations, uh, more social activities. Um, you can find the future upcoming events on our um, Grand Fund GP website. Uh, it will be in the newsletter if you scroll down a little bit. Uh, we will update this newsletter. Unfortunately, we don't have a hard copy for you guys, but it will be all digital. And in that newsletter, you can click on the Zoom link, so it gives you easy access within the newsletter. Also on Facebook, our Facebook page, we will be posting reminders and just different Zoom links, different events that we're going to try to get to you guys. Um, but yeah, I enjoy all of y'all, and I love seeing you guys. Here at the summit, we miss you. We miss you so much. <laughs> well, it's, again, it's so good to see everybody's face, and uh, I hope you, everyone is staying safe and dealing with this situation that we're going through. Thank you, Mr. Carlton. Thank you. We miss you. Yeah. Well, I thank miss you, thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. Thank you, Take Don. Care. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys.